Hey there, Darren Garman, and welcome to this episode of the Heartland Multifamily Show. The place, the place for all things multifamily. And man, I'm excited about this episode because we're going to be learning from one of the masters in this episode, and that is Patrick Bet David. And so we're going to be talking about the three things, the three things that real estate investors, multifamily owners, Multifamily investors like you and I can learn from Patrick Bet David that can not only be of value to us, but get us from where we are to really where we want to be with our real estate investments. I'm excited to go over this episode with you. Hit those three main points so you can discover how you can make much faster progress when it comes to your real estate investments. Welcome to the Heartland Multifamily Show, the shorter, more profitable path to multifamily ownership and investing. I'm in Patrick Bet David's podcast studio. What in the hell am I doing here? You're asking yourself. Well, I'm doing what I'm doing here is something that most multifamily owners and investors, and, and for that matter, entrepreneurs should be doing, and that's making themselves better. All right, like I said, I'm excited about this episode. I got a lot to dive into here that you're just gonna get a ton of value out of. Now, before I go into the three main things that we can learn from Patrick Bet David as real estate investors, make sure you do me a couple of favors, okay? Number one, if you like what we talk about, if what we're talking about on this episode resonates with you, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button below, below so you don't miss out on anything having to do with all things multifamily. So that's number one. Number two is, you know, I'd like to hear your feedback on this episode. We'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to have some dialogue with you. So go ahead and, you know, give me some comments below and would like to have, like I said, some dialogue with you about what I cover on this episode. Okay, so look, I talked about the three main things that real estate investors like us, especially multifamily owners and investors, can learn from a guy like Patrick Bet David. But you know, I don't want to make the assumption that everybody knows who one of the most brightest entrepreneurial minds out there today is. I want to make sure that, you know, there's at least there's probably some people that aren't quite aware of who he is. So before I give you an idea on who Patrick Bet David is, uh, I want to give you kind of some backstory to this episode. Okay, so I was privileged to be with my inner circle mastermind group, and I was privileged here a couple of weeks ago to sit in on a private. That's right, it was a private meeting. It was my small group uh, meeting in one of our group members' homes. And we had uh, us meeting together, and Patrick Bet David was a guest to our private meeting. And heck, we spent probably about, I don't know, 90 minutes, maybe two hours together going over and fine tuning a lot of things that us as investors, as business owners, go through. So just a ton of value there. And not surprisingly, what we're going to be talking about on the remaining part of this episode are the three main takeaways I got from that private meeting with Patrick Bet David. But before we go into that, we want to make sure I want to make sure you understand who Patrick Bet David is. So, this is a guy that was in Iran. So, he lived in Iran and he fled Iran with his parents. Uh, this was during the Iran Iraq war and actually ended up living in a refugee camp for quite a while. So imagine that, you know, you're escaping your country, uh, there's war going on, and you're sitting in a refugee camp, you know. So finally, finally, his family makes their way to the U.S. They make their way to the States. And uh, when Patrick arrives to the States, one of the things that he decides to do is he decides to join the Army. So he was in the army, enlisted and joined the army. And towards the end of his enlistment, uh, before him being discharged, uh, he got that entrepreneurial itch, you know, wanting to 
make his mark on this world as an entrepreneur. So he's discharged from the army. And what does he start doing? He starts selling health club memberships, right? Health club memberships. So he starts selling health club memberships and discovers what the real world of being an entrepreneur is like uh, in doing that, makes his way through the process with blood, sweat, and tears into owning his own financial services firm that specializes in insurance. And that firm you fast forward to today is one of the mega power financial services firms in the world today. All right, so this is really cool because the backdrop that we got in that inner circle meeting was from a guy that went from refugee to coming to the States to joining the army, okay, to then getting into the entrepreneurial game. And, you know, you fast forward to today through, like I said, a shit ton of blood, sweat, and tears, and the guy runs and has one of the most successful financial services uh, firms in the insurance world out there today. And then in addition to that, most people, and you're probably one of them, know Patrick Bet David from his company, Valuetainment. And through Valuetainment, he has produced just a ton of valuable content, not only himself, but he has interviewed some of the greatest minds out there in all fields, business, sports, you name it, he's talked to them, he's interviewed them, and those are available on YouTube uh, and also in other places. So back to what you and I can take away from a guy like Patrick Bet David, what the guy's been through, what he's learned, and what he continues to learn and understand along the way. I had just a ton of takeaways from this meeting, but let's just boil it down to three. Three for you and I, that we can really use to compound time and getting us from being the real estate investors we are today to the real estate investors we know we can be later on in terms of reaching our potential. All right, so number one. Number one is this. It's a long game, right? Real estate, especially multifamily, is a long game. So you need to be committed to and know up front it is a long game. So, for example, one of Patrick Bet David's best selling books is called Your Next Five Moves, right? Your Next Five Moves. By the way, get the book. If you don't have it, get the book. It's a great read. I've read thousands of books, and this is one of the best ones that I've read. And really, the title says it all in terms of the number one thing that I learned is you need to be thinking ahead. You need to not only be dealing with the things on your plate now as a real estate owner, as a real estate investor, as a multifamily owner and investor, in terms of the things you got to take care of now, of course, but you need to be thinking the long game, right? What do things look like for you next year, three years from now, five years from now, hell, 10 years from now? Okay, and you're not always going to have a crystal clear picture of this, obviously. And by the way, this is whether you're an active investor or you're a passive investor owner. It doesn't matter. What do things look like to you? And really, at the end of the day, knowing, hey, I'm in it for the long game. I'm consistently going to be in it for the long game. And because I'm in it for the long game, I'm going to be thinking two, three, five moves ahead on what I should be thinking of, what I should be expecting, and what plans I should be making now, having made those kinds of decisions based on it being a long-term game. Because think about it. How many of us, especially in the real estate world, are only thinking like in front of us, like right here? Okay, what's in front of us right now is what we're spending 95% of our time on. Believe me, I know. I've been there, done that. All right, and I continue to fight through knowing, hey, this is a long-term game. And we gotta be thinking three to five moves ahead in terms of what we want, what we expect, what our clarity is gonna be, and where we're going. All right, so that's number one, long-term game, thinking three to five moves ahead. All right, now here's number two. Now number two might be kind of a surprise to you. 
Number two is this. One of the things that he said while we had our private meeting together was, if you're really not competing against, or at least competing with, people that are better than you, you're kind of a coward. Now, he didn't say that word for word, but I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he said. If you're not competing with, if you're not sticking your neck out there enough to compete with or compete against those that are better than you, you know, you're pretty much a coward. And that makes a ton of sense because what is one of the things that slows a lot of us real estate owners, multifamily investors down? It's us, right? It's us because we get comfortable where we're at. Whether you're comfortable starting with, let's say, a four-unit property, you want to stay in that kind of comfort zone once you've got that done. Whether you're comfortable with you know, the portfolio you have so far and you want to stay kind of comfort there. You like that comfortable place. All right, we're going to take a quick break. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I'm going to be having a free webinar coming up. The link's below on how to correctly and with low risk, invest your IRA or 401k in really good multifamily properties. A majority of our investors do this. I do this personally. It's not illegal. Make sure you click the link below. We'd love to have you. You see, bottom line, if you're not out there competing and working on getting better and better with what you own, what you plan on owning, what you think you can own, and knowing you're going to be competing with those that are better than you, you're pretty much kind of throwing the towel in and saying, oh, that's enough. I'm done. I've had enough. Now, in reality, that's not a wrong answer. But knowing you can do better, knowing that I can do better, that's where this really makes a lot of sense. Because if you decide not to compete with those, be around those, hang around with those better than you, and compete with those people, you're pretty much throwing in the towel and saying, I don't think I want to really reach my full potential in real estate. Not a, not a wrong answer. You don't have to. But you lose all of your rights to complain about where you're at and why you aren't where you think you need to be, why it's taking so much time for you to be where you want to be. If you're not competing with those better than you, you are throwing in the towel as a coward. And that's not a wrong answer, but you now lose the right to complain about where you're at, how long it's taking, how much frustration you're having, how much work it's taking for you to get from where you are to where you think you can be. Makes a ton of sense. Makes a ton of sense because it's easy for us to get comfortable where we're at instead of seeking those out better than us, competing with and against those out better than us, out there that are better than us because it raises our standards raises our accountability by doing that. And when you get locked into that way of thinking, man, you are almost, almost unstoppable. All right. So we've covered some two main takeaways I wanted to share with you uh, with my time, during my time uh, in that private meeting with Patrick, Bet, David. Now there's a third. There's a third I want to mention to you. And this one, again, might be unexpected, might not be what you think, but it is probably of the three that I've mentioned, arguably the most important. And it's simply this. If you're going to exist in business, in our case, it's going to be as an entrepreneur, in our case, it's going to be multifamily. You have really three things you need to be focusing on, okay, as part of it. Number one is purpose. What is your purpose? Number two is your mission. What's your mission? And number three is obligation. So purpose, mission, and obligation. Now, at first you might think, okay, what, what does that mean, Darren? Purpose, mission, obligation. You, you, you're kind of losing me. The way for you to make as much progress as you want is to be showing up every day with purpose. Okay, every day with purpose. And that purpose needs to be on your mission. You are placed here on this planet for a purpose. And that purpose 
is a mission that you should need and have to follow. If you do not have that attitude that you are here to accomplish and create as much impact as you possibly can by being an entrepreneur, by being a multifamily owner or investor, passive or active, you will not be able to survive, get through, push through those days and times where it's going to be pretty damn difficult. All right. Is every day in business an easy day? Is every day as a multifamily owner or even a property manager, for example, an easy day? Hell no, it's not. There are many forces that you have to fight every day. And if you don't show up with that purpose, that passion every day, if you don't show up with that mission every day, and frankly show up being personally obligated to accomplish as much as you possibly can, and I'm not talking necessarily financially, but accomplish as much as you can in terms of impact every day that you are on this planet and working in your business, multifamily, which is what we're talking about, you're not going to be able to reach the potential you know in your mind you can reach. Okay? You're not. You have to have that fuel of purpose. You've got to have that fuel of mission. Hey, man, I've been placed here to really make an impact. I've been placed here to make a freaking huge impact, not only on me and, or those people I care about, but all of the people that, re that resonate with my message. I'm here to make an impact. And by the way, obligation, I'm obligated to do such a thing. Now think about it. How would you like to show up every day as an investor or entrepreneur and you're like, oh, you know, I think I want to see if I can get some stuff done today, maybe get some things off my desk, get some things taken care of. Okay. Or are you going to show up like, hey, man, I got, I got a purpose, I got a mission, and I got obligation to be the best and make the best impact that I possibly can. How much progress do you think you'll make with that attitude? How much easier will it be for you to push through, the, push through those difficult times that you're going to have? It's going to make it a lot easier, isn't it? It's going to make it a lot easier. So it's not philosophical, okay? I guess in a way it is. It's not just such, it's not like a philosophy. It's a way of life, especially for folks like you and me, that we're entrepreneurs and we focus in that world of being a multifamily owner and investor. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's hit these three takeaways again that us real estate investors, what we can learn from Patrick Bet David. Okay, first of all, a reminder, this is a long game. We are in the long-term game and that requires us to not only remember and know that, but to be thinking three, four, five moves ahead, just like the book, all right? Secondly, if you're not competing against the best, against those better than you, you're pretty much a coward and you're never going to hit the kind of potential as a multifamily owner, investor, or hell, even an entrepreneur that you are capable of. And then there's number three, all right? That is purpose, mission, and obligation. All right. I I'm telling you, if you lock these three things in, I mean, my big takeaway was, holy shit, if I can lock these three things in and lock them in consistently, man, the kind of progress that I'm looking for, the kind of potential that I know is there for me as a multifamily owner and investor, those targets are, I can now see those targets. Those targets are real. And that, my friend, excites me. And I'm hoping that that excites you too. All right. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode, this Patrick Bet David episode of the Heartland Multifamily Show. I hope you appreciated the three big takeaways. I hope that you will implement these three big takeaways as soon as possible and start seeing the value and the benefits of doing so.
All right, take care. We'll see you on the next episode.